Good morning, good afternoon. We are going to wait a few seconds in order to give some time for all participants to enter the session. In the meantime, you are already seeing the program for the coming half an uh, hour and a half. I will begin with some technical aspects and consideration as usual in this virtual events. This session is going to continue in English. Still, this event is having simultaneous translation service, English, Spanish. In order to select your preferred language, you just have to click the interpretation icon on the menu bar at the bottom of your screen and select their Spanish. And very quickly in Spanish, este evento va a continuar en inglés. No obstante, cuenta con un... This event will uh, be done in English, even though we have a simultaneous interpretation ser service. Uh, if you want to choose your uh, preferred language, go down on the, to the uh, Zoom dashboard and uh, choose the, uh, the language that you prefer. Channel MLTV. So we have some more audience there, and also important to mention that this session will be stored for approximately three weeks from now on the AHK Chile uh, YouTube account uh, slash channel. If you would like to watch the session again or recommend uh, others to watch it, a, uh, a usual question is about the presentations from the speaker. So in this regard, we will ask our speakers and the startup to share the presentation. If we are allowed uh, to do so, we are sending you them afterwards. Regardless, as I said, the session is being recorded and stored. We are leaving you the link on the chat to check later on all presentation, contact information, in case you would like to contact some of today's speakers. And of course, you can always contact us. We will be very glad to, to link you. If you have questions, please feel free to use the chat. We will try to answer all your questions during this event, but in case we are not able to, we are answering them uh, over email after the session. Dear speakers, dear startups, since we have so many presentations today, a very dynamic agenda, please be prepared when I present you so you can turn on your camera, your microphone as quickly as possible. And also, please remember to select no language, no channel on the menu bar of Zoom when you are presenting. And having said that, on behalf of the State of Bavaria, Office for South America, the AHK Chile, together with Expande of Fundación Chile in the framework of the Energy Partnership chile Alemania, an initiative of the Federal Ministry of Economics and Climate Action, we welcome you to this event, Startup for the Energy Transition, Demo Day Energy Challenge Germany, and Kick Off Energy Challenge Chile. Germany and Chile work together to enhance energy efficiency on different levels and with different actions and projects. And in this context, take place this acceleration program, the Energy Challenge, which aims to promote initiatives that help accelerate the energy transition with innovation and entrepreneurship. Today, we are having two events in one, so to speak, on one side, the Demo Day, the Energy Challenge Germany, and on the other side, the, the kickoff of the Energy Challenge Chile. About the Energy Challenge Germany is a program oriented to German startups in the areas of energy generation, green hydrogen, energy storage, infrastructure, mobility, digitalization, to present innovative solutions to representative of the Chilean industry to explore business partnerships between Germany and Chile. And with today's demo day, three winning startups are being selected in order to be invited to visit Chile, to explore business opportunities and meet potential partners. This all in the framework of the Trade Fair Expo North, where Germany is the guest country this year. Today, we are also launching the Energy Challenge Chile, also an acceleration program, but in this case for Chilean startups with solutions that could contribute the energy transition in Germany. But this is only a preview of this initiative. We are finding out more about it later on. At this point, we would like to mention and thank all our, uh, our, uh, our partners in both initiatives. Let me name them the Energy Partnership Chile Alemania, the, Gen the German Federal Ministry of, Economic, uh, of Economics and Climate Action, the Chilean Ministry of Energy, the GIC, 
expanded from Fundación Chile, our German partners, Berg Eins, Fraunhofer Venture, Spin Lab. We also have Chilean partners, La Asociación Chilena de Venture Capital, Crisalis, Ciencia 2030 de la Universidad de Concepción, Endeavor, NG Factory, Imagine, Know How, Magical, Open the Outchef, Pro Chile, Startup Chile, Incubatec UFRO, UFRO de Ventures, EL World Energy Council. No more words, no more introduction from my side. I gladly present you now Michael Schmidt in the name of the Energy Partnership Chile Alemania and Annika Schuttler, Project Leader Energies and Sustainability at the AHK Chile for some welcome words. Please. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Ursula Brendecke. I hope you can hear me well. We um, can hear you and see you, yes. Perfect. And so also a very warm welcome from my side to this special double event, uh, Startups uh, for the Ener Energy Transition in Chile and in Germany, uh, within the framework of our energy partnership, Chile Alemania. My name, uh, as Ursula already said, is Michael Schmidt. I'm part of the GIZ team uh, of the partnership, uh, and the GIZ is the executive body of the energy partnership. Um, as was already, already said, and as many of you know, the energy partnership um, is a bilateral project between the German Federal Ministry for Economic Affairs and Climate Action uh, and the Chilean Ministry of Energy. And our energy partnership became operational in 2019. And in this bilateral project, we work on political topics like the coal phase out, uh, carbon neutral innovations, and the new hydro hydrogen economy, uh, but exchange when it comes to digitalization or energy efficient efficiency measures in both countries. And this is also where startups uh, come into play. If you're interested in more uh, activities uh, on our website, www www.energypartnership.cl, uh, you can find a wide range of studies and other publications that we have produced in the last years. And with new governments here in Chile and also in Germany, uh, we open a new chapter in this year in these challenging and uh, one can even say disruptive times. Um, together with all these partner institutions that, that Ursula also already mentioned, also the German embassy, for example, but of course the AHK, the Bayerische Vertretung and many other organizations or, and institutions like Fraunhofer. Our aim is to uh, keep learning from each other and that both countries keep uh, getting closer to each other as well. And thanks to this teamwork, our partnership is strongly positioned also on the subject of business to government. And one example of which we celebrate today, which is the Demo Day Energy Challenge Germany and the kickoff uh, energy Challenge Chile. And with this, I would like to hand over to Annika, Annika Schüttler, who is the project leader for energy and sustainability at the AHK, the AHK. And she will tell you more about what we have done so far in the area of startups uh, and energy transition, and also what is awaiting you today in this event. So thanks a lot for your attention. Um, and I hand over to Annika. Thank you very much, Michael, and also from my side, a very warm welcome to everybody. We're very happy to see these many people participating in this double event. It's on the one side, as Ursula already mentioned, it's the demo day of the Energy Challenge Germany. And on the other side, we have the kickoff of the Energy Challenge Chile. As Michael stated, we as the Chamber of Commerce, the Chilean German Chamber of Commerce, are uh, cooperating in the energy partnership, especially concerning all the topics related to um, the public-private cooperation. Um, and we are searching for ways to enhance business opportunities for both countries, for companies of both countries in the fields of the energy transition. And one of the topics that is of main concern to both governments is fostering innovation, which is very much needed in order to achieve the energy transition. And that's why fostering startups has uh, an especial importance. And that's why we started um, doing a long study for all of those who are interested in the study. You can afterwards contact me and I will send it to you. It's a study that analyzed both ecosystems for entrepreneurship in energy in Chile and in Germany. And then we saw from the strengths and weaknesses of each of the ecosystems how we can 
sort of foster cooperation in the fields, in the different fields and help startups entering both markets and with that uh, bringing to the market the important innovations that we need. And uh, from this study, then we sort of did different activities and uh, we are looking for raising also opportunities for um, financing for startups. On the other hand, we also look at educational aspects. For example, we're planning on doing a summer school where students from a university are going to go to a German university. And then we will do a whole entrepreneurship program for a whole week. And then we're also looking at cooperation between accelerators of both countries. And we are directly sort of helping the startups. And that's why we launched these energy challenges. On the one hand, the energy challenge Germany, and on the other hand, energy challenge Chile. That Ursula already explained very well. So in view of the time, I will leave it up to here. And I, uh, I'm very much looking forward to all the pitches that we will hear today. So Ursula, I give back the word to you. Thank you very much, Annika. Thank you very much, Michael. And with that introduction, we continue now with the pitch session of the eight finalist startups of the Energy Challenge Germany. For that, um, let me introduce you our great jury, grand jury composed of representatives from Chile and Germany, and who will select the three winners today. We have Andreas Eppelbacher, Deputy uh, uh, Director at Fraunhofer Ventures, Frank Dinta, General Manager of Fraunhofer Chile Research and Director of the Center for Solar Energy Technologies, Andreas Eisfelder, Head of New Energy Business Latin America at Siemens Energy, Ignacio Jofre, Technical Advisor at the GIC Chile, Martin Richter, Coach and Consultant at SpinLab, Loreto Rivera, New Business and Stakeholders Manager at RWE Renewables. And last but not least, Daniel Rosende, Managing Director of Latin America at SMA Solar Technology AG. Each startup will have three minutes to pitch, follow about two minutes for questions from the jury. And how are the startups being evaluated? The jury will consider a validated business model, the technology, te technological innovation, um, the match with the Chilean energy market, the quality of the pitch in English, the capacity to work with partners from industry, the capacity for internalization, and last but not least, their contribution to the energy transition. So, dear startup, this is the moment. Be prepared. Remember, I'm going to stop uh, to stop you after three minutes without a prior warning. Yes, I'm going to be the bad one here. Um, but good luck to everyone. Let's begin with Magment Mauricio Esguerra. The stage is yours. So thank you very much. I'm uh, very happy to be here. So Magment is a company that was founded 2015 based on the technology of magnetic concrete. Magnetic concrete is a technology that allows dynamic wireless charging, which is one of the most important infrastructure possibilities we have for electrical vehicles. What we are looking at is uh, using just uh, recycled magnetic particles combined with cement and making up with this a very robust concrete. We're looking at solving the issue of vehicles that uh, need to be charged. And right now it's a very convenient to do so with cables, with large batteries, with very limited uh, uh, reach, and also with a lot of challenges on the, on the CO2 levels that this generates. By integrating uh, in floors, in parking lots, in highways, or in wait waiting stations, uh, we can solve this issue in a very simple and very cost-efficient manner. And I would like to give you uh, a quick overview of, of the applications we have. On the one hand, for highways, it's possible to charge as the vehicles move. So we see here just a demonstrator that was uh, shown recently in an in a exhibition for Intralogistics, how this works, how the energy is being transferred as the vehicle moves on top of the coils. And this way we can really uh, have much smaller uh, batteries and much, much uh, less vehicles in operation. The, co the competing technologies are uh, really not able to scale this in a proper manner neither if 
uh, only calls are used without magnetic materials, or if the magnetic materials used are just conventional uh, so-called ceramic ferrites. So we have here a huge advantage, and we would like to solve a, a number of applications where it is also involved the possibility, not only for the dynamic charging that we just saw, but also stationary charging or even opportunity charging. And one of the main applications for opportunity charging, and I want to go a bit faster here, is really to use this in situations where you have uh, public transportation like minibuses or buses or trucks, and uh, specifically looking at the, at the market in South America, where we are already becoming quite active. We have a large project in, in Medellin, which is going to start in about three months. We look here at how to best use uh, uh, either the, the bus of the buses or the bus stations, where we can integrate uh, the coils directly at the bus stop, and this way allow it to, to have recurrent charging during the operation of, of such a bus system during the day. So thank you very much. And uh, I hope that this called your interest. And anytime you want to reach out, uh, please do so. We would be happy to uh, interact with uh, interested parties in this field. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mauricio. Uh, dear jury, um, now it's a time for question. You can raise your hand and ask Mauricio a question. I'm looking at you, please, um, dear jury, if you can uh, turn on your camera and uh, microphones off. Frank, you have a question, please. A question, please. Yes, Mauricio, uh, well presented. Um, I would like to know uh, how much kilometers did you already install? And uh, is it correct that you are looking for changing all the roads in South America? No, we are, we are installing uh, the first project in Indiana. Uh, this, this year we are starting to do this installation. It will be around 400 meters. So this is something that at the, at the stage of roads is at the beginning. We're much more concentrating now uh, the efforts on installations for intralogistics. And it is not so that we're looking forward at uh, changing all roads. Uh, it's of course something that will take a lot of time, uh, but it's something that can be done uh, in, the, in the course of reconstruction of roads, of uh, improvement of existing infrastructure. This is uh, basically the, the goal, particularly in the United States. Thank you very much. Um, more questions for Mauricio? We have time for one more. Andreas, yeah, sure. Andreas yeah. please. Mauricio, thank you very much. Uh, just a question. I think you, um, you're just looking for clients, but what kind of clients or what group of clients do you think you, they will be first? So what, what kind of clients you're trying to address yeah, first? We are definitely going the B2B market first. That's where we see uh, specifically uh, companies in uh, logistics, in warehousing, in industrial sites. That's our first call. And we are going uh, next uh, to the more B2G type of market. Uh, where we are reaching out to cities, uh, to the development also of solutions for micromobility and urban systems. So that's the, the second type of, of customers. And much, much later in the process, we will be approaching the B2C market. So the end consumers uh, will come in probably more in the, in the range of seven to 10 years from now. Thank you. Thank you, Mauricio. Thank you, Magment. Uh, we continue now with our second startup, Breeze Technologies. Robert Heinecke is presenting, is pitching. Hello, everybody. Let me share my screen and then we can start. Good. Peace. Hi. Hi, everybody. My name is Robert Heinecke. I'm the founder and CEO of Breeze Technologies. We are a German tech company and we are a leader in air quality sensors, data, and cleaner action intelligence. Air pollution is one of the greatest environmental health challenges today, according to the World Health Organization. Nine out of 10 people globally are living in areas with two high levels of air pollution. And it also has a direct contribution to climate change with ozone, for instance, is number three of the anthropogenic greenhouse gases, but also for instance, particulate matter are absorbing and scattering light in the atmosphere and thereby also indirectly contributing to climate change. So we urgently need to do something about air pollution. 
still today's measurement technologies are based on paradigms from the 60s and 70s. And we basically don't know in most of the places in our cities how air quality actually looks like. And we changed that. We have developed our own lower cost air quality sensors that are a thousand times cheaper and 50,000 times smaller than the current market standard by moving all the complexity from the individual monitoring location from the hardware into the cloud, into software. And thereby we are able to measure all the different parameters of urban air quality, carbon, ozone, nitric oxides, et cetera. As I said, 50,000 times smaller and a thousand times cheaper. With that, for the first time, we can provide ubiquitous air quality data from the whole urban environment. We do that in three different verticals nowadays. We started in indoor air quality. Urban air quality is by far our largest vertical, but we're also working in the industrial space and also combining these data sets with each other in an approach that we call environmental intelligence. We bring all that data together on our environmental intelligence cloud where we calibrate the data and then provide insights and dashboards to our customers in a turnkey solution. And we connect the challenges that we identify locally with artificial intelligence with a catalog of more than three and a half thousand cleaner actions that we know of to identify which cleaner actions are going to be the most efficient and effective ones to implement locally. This in turn brings sustainable impact because we create transparency, we enable change to implement cleaner actions, and thereby also put together an ecosystem of different actors towards cleaner air in our cities. We are a team of 17 people currently with customers of, uh, in 11 countries on three continents. We've been endorsed by numerous national and international government institutions for our work. And just to name some of the projects that we've been doing in Hamburg together with Microsoft, we built the densest air quality monitoring network in the world. For a German DAX chemical leader, we are helping them to digitalize their environmental monitoring. And as you can see, we already have quite a big presence. And our plans for Chile, we want to understand the market better. We want to establish at least three channel partnerships there locally and sign one project until the end of the year. And we think Exponor is going to be, uh, be our way to do so. Thank you very much, and I look forward to your questions. Thank you very much, um, Robert. Your jury, it's your time. Loreto, please. Thank you very much for, for your pitch. Uh, I would like to ask you, why do you think Exponor will be uh, the first uh, entrance, I would say, to, to Chile markets? Yeah, I mean, we, we looked at the trade fair and we understand that there's both governmental representatives there as well as also uh, environmental managers, for instance, from mining companies and, and similar industry players. So for us, this really brings together the key ecosystem of those people that are typically using our solutions, which are environment departments of governments of cities, as well as also environmental managers of industry corporates. So for us, that's really the perfect place to be. Thank you. Daniel. Yes, one question from my side. Uh, could you please clarify the, the, the customer target market in the, in the case of Chile? You mentioned that you are analyzing currently some options there. Uh, considering the reality of some main cities in, in the country, uh, could you please clarify the, the, the customers and the, the business strategy to, to achieve? Uh, yeah, basically. Um, I mean, on the governmental side, it would be any city, I would say upwards of 20,000 inhabitants from our experience. So those are uh, those are the cities that either want to already extend their monitoring efforts, but and their, their clean action efforts, but they don't might they might not have the capacity to do either with personnel or also the funding. And as I mentioned, our solution is much more affordable. So it actually gives the, the cities the opportunity to do more than they're currently doing. As well as then also um, industry companies, environmental managers of industry sites, particularly we think in Chile for, for mining, uh, as well as also for potentially production, uh, heavy machinery industry, um, those would be the ones that we would be targeting first. And we would also be looking for um, partners to actually do that for channel partners. Uh, which I've mentioned. Uh, I actually was a speaker at an air quality conference in Latin America last year, uh, which was happening in, in Lima. And there I was already uh, being able to make the first connections also to city representatives in the whole uh, continent. And basically the feedback that we got was that it was definitely wanted and needed there. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you very much, Robert. Thank you very much for the technologies. Our third uh, startup today is Arimotors. Thomas Kuvac is pitching. OK, 
Okay. Yes, hello. My name is Thomas. Uh, I'm uh, one of the founders of Ari Motors uh, from Leipzig. We design and realize small electric uh, vehicles, um, mainly for on focus on B2B customers. The name Ari is Japanese, uh, means ants and as small as powerful as uh, these little animals are our vehicles. Um, today, any large city uh, around the globe has serious traffic issues, which is caused by more and always larger trucks, vans, even bigger and heavier cars, which sometimes are hardly affordable. Uh, so we came up with an um, idea of a very tiny vehicle for many different occasions, uh, starting from a standard box to a pickup uh, with or without a soft top or even a tipper. So far, we have more than 42 different uh, models um, individualized for our customers, for instance, for delivery services, uh, for farmers, uh, or even for craftsmen. And if you have more to transport, we uh, even have uh, much larger vehicles. Um, our target group is um, divided into small and medium-sized businesses, business owners, um, large uh, corporations who use that for their internal transport, and last but not least, uh, cities and towns, which use uh, an ARI for the, as an everyday tool. Um, our USP are very affordable prices, very low running costs, because we reduce our vehicles to the uh, uh, only on the uh, little things. And um, our uh, cars are not high-tech cars, they are low-tech cars, so that's why they are as well easy to repair. Uh, we as a company doubled our sales um, every year, so we do with our sales volume. Um, our team is highly motivated now, not only to scale to Europe, but as well um, uh, to Latin America, where we have even more potential customers with more than 500,000 sold transport vehicles every year. Uh, so we want to scale. Um, to Chile, because um, here we are looking for a strong um, partner in the energy sector to get access to the B2B um, market and maybe to have this partner in a partnership to produce even vehicles uh, in Chile, made in Chile, uh, because your neighbors are, in are interested mar interesting markets as well. And Everywhere we have all the same uh, target groups, craftsmen, companies, communities. Thank you very much and uh, gracias por su atención. Muchas gracias, Thomas. <laughs> Thank you very much. Dear Jury, time for questions. Um, Andreas, Andreas Eisfelder, let's begin with you. Morning also from, from my side. Excellent presentation, Thomas. One question. What can you tell us about the propulsion system, about the drivetrain? How are the 42 different models uh, being, being driven? What's the, uh, what's the uh, primary source of energy? The primary source of energy is either in uh, Lifepo battery uh, or in a solar panel on the roof. And both combined together can uh, extend the range. So the maximum range at the moment is uh, nearly 500 kilometers for such a small vehicle. Thank, thank you. you. The other Andreas, Andreas Etzelbacher, please. Yeah, um, I think to, to thank you again, Thomas. Uh, just uh, just a question to your uh, industry partners. I mean, building uh, cars usually. I don't know what you're doing uh, for yourself or what kind of the supply chain uh, you you partner with other industry. So would you let us know more about that, please? Well, the thing is, um, we, we, have an, we have a network of different partners. We are working together. Um, as, as it usual in the car industry, you, you have a network all over the world. So there, there are parts from, from Asia, there are parts from Europe, there are parts, parts from Western Europe, from Eastern Europe, everywhere. And we combine them both to, uh, all together in one product. And uh, this was our aim, uh, German quality uh, for European customers, works very well so far. Thank you. And last question, Daniel, please. Uh, hello, Thomas. Uh, hello. One question regarding the, your, your competitive advantage regarding other low cost uh, electric vehicles available, for example, coming from, from other uh, markets like China or Asia in general. Well, the thing is, um, 
Asian products, uh, Indian products, Chinese products, they have an, the aim to be very, very cheap. This is their only one USP. Our USP is to bring such a cheap vehicle on the next level so that this vehicle will sustain the everyday use of an well, German Bauhof or whatever. Yeah, so German customers or European customers have a high expect expectance and uh, we will meet them because we are a team of engineers and we know where to change uh, these kinds of vehicles to, to have a longer durability, uh, to have more stable vehicles than the ones from uh, Far East. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Um, our next uh, startup is ProTarget. Martin Scheurer, the stage is yours. Hello, everybody, and uh, good morning to Chile. Um, my name is Martin Scheurer. I'm the director and uh, founder of ProTarget AG in Germany. Our company specializes in concentrated solar thermal. And we're doing this to help industrial customers to change to solar process heat. Martin, Together sorry with... to interrupt you. Uh, are you sharing a presentation? Are you sharing a pitch deck or you are yeah. just speaking? Or it's not visible. One second, I go back. Yes, please. Try again. Now we are seeing the screen. You're seeing. You're seeing the screen? Yes. In presentation you... mode? Not yet. Now Not we yet. are. Thank you. Okay. So once again, good day, good morning, everybody. My name is Martin Scheurer. I'm the director and founder of ProTarget AG in Germany. Our company is specialized in uh, concentrating solar thermal systems. And with those technologies, we are helping industrial customers to change to solar process heat. Together with our manufacturing partners in Chile, we are providing a certified technology that is qualified for desert, like the Atacama. The industry has a high energy demand, which mainly is used to produce process heat. This leaves the industry with a lot of challenges to generate CO2 neutral energy, to reduce energy costs, and to become independent from fossil fuels. For these issues, we have two technologies that can solve them. One is a, um, a technology which is called CPC, producing hot water of up to 100 degrees. Second is what is called the parabolic trough collector, which generates steam and process heat of up to 420 degrees. Both of these technologies are specifically designed to meet the requirements of the industry. I'm going to show you now two actual examples from our customers where solar thermal energy provides sustainable process heat. One is a fruit juice company where that gets supplied with hot water and steam. The system has also a thermal storage system, which means this energy is available 24 seven. The second example is a mine in Chile, which becomes supplied by process steam for the production of potassium nitrate. Both of these applications have one thing in common. The customer benefits from sustainable and cost-effective process heat from an energy source, which is unlimited, which is the sun. Thank you very much. Thank you, Martin. So time for questions. Martin, please uh, stop sharing your presentation. Frank, please. Um, thank you, Martin. Um, how many uh, prototypes did you already install? Worldwide, we have four systems uh, running prototypes as well as commercial systems. 
and uh, what is the plan for for Chile? Uh, what is the big benefit of of your system? Basically, this technology <clears throat> works best uh, if three conditions are given: high solar radiation, high energy costs, and a strong industrial demand of energy. Chile combines these three requirements probably better than any country in the world. Um, and here we are targeting mainly the mining sector, but also the growing, uh, continuously growing food industry would be one of the sectors that could benefit from this technology. Thank you very much, um, Martin. Our next startup is Industrial Analytics. Tanya Schulze, I'm already seeing you there. Yeah, I hope you also can hear me well. We can hear you. So I will share my screen and then we are good to go. So hi, I'm Tanya from Industrial Analytics and we have operators to understand their machinery better. So uh, operators of energy and chemical plants are facing three major challenges, uh, energy transformation, retain of expert knowledge and too many notifications and sales alarms that actually need to be interpreted. What they need is a flexible solution with pre-built in <coughs> machinery knowledge and actionable insights on what to do next. Our founders work for a large tool machinery manufacturer and um, uh, saw that um, most uh, solutions were lacking this. So what they, um, and so industrial analytics was born. With our AI services, uh, clients are able to optimize performances and maintenance cycles. So our AI algorithm will detect anomalies and failures and uncover optimization potentials. The solution will then create an event and inform the operator that something is uh, wrong or not working right, and then we'll uh, tell him on what to do next so they can optimize processes and also the energy consumption. With something with a solution like that, you can reduce up to 70% of unplanned downtime and save up to 500,000 euros a year in maintenance costs. In our dashboard, uh, we not only gathering the machinery feedback, but we also gathering the operator feedback. So he can annotate events and also comment on them or combine them. And from this uh, feedback and also from its comments, the AR algorithm will learn from it and will um, recognize a similar failure in the future. We also have a digital twin, so you can simulate um, the machines like turbines or whole plants. And we are working with physical based models and they are delivering more insights than just a statistic model, for example. So and because of that, they can understand the dynamical behavior of the machinery and understand the correlations within it and can uh, uncover the potentials that can be optimized and also can uncover the uh, root causes of the failures. We have uh, proven success in Germany and Europe. So we are normally working in the energy utility sector, but also oil and gas and chemicals. So we are uh, monitoring refineries like Pizzica and Domo, and also power heat stations like Vattenfall that you see on the left. So uh, at the moment we are monitoring 15 assets with 10,000 data live streams. And what we are looking for in Chile is to get to know the market better, also to find clients at the expo or potential customers or potential partners uh, to transform the energy sector. We are 13 driven uh, engineers in data science. We are founded end of 2010, uh, got a seed investment of 1.5 million euros and um, we shown success in the past and we will scale up to more machines this year. So now I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tanya. Loreto, please. Thank you very much, Tanya. And of those industries where you're already working, which do you think uh, is the one that most needs this kind of technologies? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> what we're already seeing is um, that clients uh, have some sort of monitoring, but not. Um, 
like uh, AI-based monitoring they are not using at the moment. So I think it's not a question of which industry, it's more like what they have already installed and what they're actually doing with their maintenance inspections and um, what they're actually monitoring at the moment. So for example, we also have an application where you can uh, digitize uh, plant uh, uh, works and not uh, every company has, for example, a mobile inspection tool. <laughs> so this is like a very uh, easy way to optimize these processes. Thank you. Daniel Sende, please. Hello, Tanya. Thanks for the presentation. Uh, which would you say that is the main benefit of your solutions regarding other monitoring or analytics available in the, in the market? So I think the um, main USP of us is definitely our background in turbo machinery that we actually understand the machinery. We uh, have a lot of experience there. For example, we have other solutions on the market that uh, are just software solutions and they just use the statistic models. And we uh, use like a physical based model. So we are having principles like thermodynamic and rotodynamic built in. And because of that, they really can understand where the failure lies. So we are looking at the whole process of the machine or the plan, and not only just um, one uh, point of the compressor. For example, there is also solutions of uh, OEM manufacturers, but they're just looking at this one compressor, but the process is a little bit larger than just this one compressor. Thank you. Thank you very much, Industrial Analytics. Um, Martin Barth is the CEO and he is representing Ecoligo, the next um, startup to pitch. Yes, hello everyone. My name is Martin Barth. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Ecoligo. And we are addressing the number one issue in emerging markets, which is the high cost of power of companies in the commercial and industrial space. Now, these business owners and CEOs know that with solar energy, they could reduce their energy expense, but they often lack two things, the access to capital, as well as the expertise on the technology side. And this is where Ecoligo comes in. We provide them with a fully financed one-stop shop solution, where we raise the capital for their project on the crowd investing platform in Germany, and we only work with qualified local engineering partners in the market to build highest quality projects. And for the duration of the contract, we take care of operation and maintenance, as well as insurance. This way we provide our customers CO2 emission free energy supply for 20 years that starts saving against the ever rising utility energy cost from day one. And with this business model, we have been quite successful in the past. We're active in six countries to date and have signed more than 146 projects that in total will save more than 1 million tons of CO2 emissions over their lifetime. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. If you look at the current energy data from the International Energy Outlook, we see that 2.5 trillion euro is spent per year on electricity by commercial and industrial customers and this is expected to triple in non-OECD countries over the next 30 years. We also can see that 99% of that is coming actually from utilities, meaning it's a blue ocean market for the direct supply of solar energy to the CNI customers. And because this market is so attractive, we're not the only ones looking into it. And there's many other companies that provide solar power purchase agreement or lease contracts to customers. But we have three main uh, USPs against them. We actually provide the most flexible solution addressing really what the customer needs. Secondly, we have the lowest cost of capital providing the highest savings to the customers. And lastly, we have built a fully digital platform that allows us to be the most efficient in the market. And that is why we were able to increase our annual recurring revenue by a thousand percent over the last two years. But what actually motivates us as a team is the CO2 impact that we can have with our project. And with the projection over the next five years, we're about to save 142 million tons of CO2 emissions with our project implemented. And with that, we are leading the global energy revolution and would like to take that to Chile and expand in the market with more partners and more customers to have a significant impact 
in the country locally. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mark. Yes, Andreas, please. Well, thanks a lot for this um, presentation. And my question is about your business model. Uh, so it's it's platform driven, connecting uh, capital to um, project implementation. But what is your money earning logic? What's uh, the business model of Ecoligo? Yeah, coming from the energy market, you can compare us to an independent power provider. We actually own the solar assets and our revenue side is the sale of electricity. So we have a price per kilowatt hour that we sell to the customers that is usually lower than their utility energy tariff. And we secure the customers with a 20 to 25 year power purchase agreement. The service is completely free for the retail investors on the investment side, and we don't ask for any commission, commission fees or um, any other uh, fees from the investors. Thank you. Are there more questions for Martin? Okay. Thank you very much, um, Ecoligo. Thank you. Now it's the turn uh, for Industrial Solar, Irapua Ribeiro, please. Thank yes. You. Thank you. I hope you see my screen already. We are seeing the screen. Yes, so thank you everyone for this opportunity. My name is Rapon Ribeiro. I'm the head of sales at Industrial Solar and I will present a little bit of what we do at the company. So we are a company with a little bit more than 14 years of uh, life so far. We have an old technology, which is the so-called Fresno Collector, which I will show you later, based here in Germany, in Freiburg. And we have a team of more than 20 experts and we have already developed several projects in different countries. So why we do it and why we are addressing Chile specifically is because industry is one of the main drivers for energy consumption. And also heat is the main way of using this heat uh, energy. So we, our proposal is to produce solar energy and therefore replace fossil fuels. So in this, therefore we contribute to the decarbonization effort and also we can uh, provide continuous growth in a sustainable way. Uh, our target markets are several, so specifically in Chile, interesting are food and beverage, mining, pharmaceutical, paper, textile, and there are several processes that can be used. Uh, okay, the solar energy that we produce can be used. So as we are talking about heat, and this is one of ways of use of generating heat, so we have the concentrated collector called Fresnel collector. As you see here, we focus the sunlight on the pipe. And therefore, we can generate steam, superheat water, or generate hot thermal oil uh, in a modular way. The system can also be installed on rooftops. Uh, here you see three modules that can be scaled up to 30 megawatts, depending on the customer capacity, and generate a very high temperature up to 400 degrees Celsius. So here's a way that we generate steam. Basically, we use the same feed water from a conventional boiler. Therefore, instead of having a burner, we have the solar collector field that can gain energy from the solar uh, resource. And therefore, we can generate steam and a high pressure that can be supplied in the process level or in the supply level, depending on the customer needs. So here's one example of a system that we have implemented already five years ago. The system is generating steam and also cooling. It's a big building. And therefore, this system is coupled with a steam drum. As you see here in this image, this steam drum is actually responsible for separating and delivering the high quality steam needed by the factory. Uh, so there we have three, three main business models. One of them is the turnkey projects that we do the complete implementation. There is a very high local value creation potential in Chile. The second is the ESCO, the heat purchase agreements that we don't only come with the project, but we come also with investors that can also be local investors or international investors. The value creation in Chile is super high because we also have the ONM included here that we sell only the heat to the customer. Therefore, they don't have to invest on the system. And we also develop energy concepts uh, for process heat supply, combining different technologies, not only concentrating uh, collector. So we can comply, supply the whole value chain. And with that, I thank you for your attention and I'm looking forward for questions. Thank you very much, Irapo. So if you can please uh, stop sharing your presentation. Andreas, yes. please. 
Yes, thank you very much um, for your presentation. We just heard a, a presentation of uh, ProTarget uh, AG, which is kind of uh, in the same area as you are, and maybe you you could tell us more about how to, how you differentiate uh, from uh, from ProTarget company. So I think uh, one of the main differences is that uh, although we generate high temperatures as also as pro target, the efficiency and the usage of area for the Fresno collector is, is actually higher. And therefore we can generate more energy per square meter, which is very interesting for industrial customers in constrained uh, urban areas, typically speaking. So we can generate more energy per square meter because the collectors can be connected close to each other and we can use better day space. This is one of the main differences. Also, I think the advantage of generating steam, I give the example of steam generation. Uh, we can generate steam directly in the collector field, which is a bit tricky to do with uh, parabolic trough collectors, but it's also possible. Thank you, Axel. Daniel, please. Yes, uh, thanks for the presentation. Uh, do you have some already uh, projects or pilot projects in, in, in Chile? Do, do you have some experience and knowledge about uh, local customers uh, regarding your solution? No, oh, so we don't have an installation yet in Chile. We have already done engineering and done market assessment. We have a, a profile, a complete profile of the customer's potentials. We have already been in the market uh, also uh, with the chamber working in these uh, business events for several years. It's a challenging market because we are also facing the competition with fossil fuels. Now, I think with this change in the, in the worldwide fossil fuel market, the potential is even higher. So paybacks that before were eventually seven years, now it's getting to three years. And I think we are uh, gonna install something soon, even this year or beginning of next year in Chile. Thank you. Thank, thank you very Bye -bye. much, Professor Solar. And now our last uh, startup in this demo day, Yogi. Martin, I think I'm going to need your help for, uh, with your last name. I want to say it right, Martin Stovsalievich. I'm right. But Yogi, it's the next startup. Thank you very much. Hello, um, can you see my presentation? Yes, we can. Perfect. So I'm going to present you Wattify Invested with Impact, the renewable energy investment platform. So we are running in a climate breakdown. The last four decades have been warmer than any decade before. And we need definitely substantial cuts in emissions if we want to stay below 1.5 degrees. 100% renewable energy is a must to prevent this climate breakdown. And unfortunately, 75% of energy is produced with non-renewable sources. We are currently, if you look worldwide, committed 1 trillion US dollar while we need roughly 3.1 trillion US dollar funding over the next decade. There's uh, a, a big difficulty because the public and private sectors must embrace innovative solutions to bridge this financing gap. With Wattify, we innovate our way out. We unlock retail investors' financial firepower. Our public platform is connecting common people with renewable energy investment opportunities. Uh, originally only accessible to institutional investors, closing the financing gap. Trust, transparency, and consistency are the basis of all interaction. In a world that needs to be protected, investors don't have to choose between doing good for an environmental benefit or doing well with a financial return. With Waterfy, really everyone can do something against climate change and earn returns. With just a few clicks, you can invest directly in stable, sustainable projects around the world. We create this new reality for our customers. Digitized, verified assets and CO2 savings virtually in real time. We stand with our know-how for absolute transparency and security. The small investors can safely invest in projects of their choice from a budget of one US dollar. Investment with impact. Whatify, you have the power. So Whatify embraces a globally scalable full end-to-end -end investment process. 
we cannot connect dedicated assets directly with retail investors across borders. We implemented hardware operates for blockchain, emitting the digital securities on our powerful tech stack, and at the same time delivers the energy data in real time to calculate the yield. A full regulatory compliant emission of digital securities and profit distribution. Individual impact investors can participate with two clicks starting at one US dollar. We possess all competencies within our company to execute and scale successfully. We have a licenses in skilled labor in the energy, fintech, DLT, as well as app domains to execute on our vision. We have a strategic partner to secure um, additional funding and the initial project pipeline. Wattify is the youngest daughter of two co-founders, Michael and myself. We are located in the heart of Bavaria in Germany with a team of 16 plus passionate engineers and developers supported by more than 10 freelancers and external experts. Climate change is uh, the biggest challenge of our times, and we must definitely convert to 100% renewable energy um, if we want to mitigate these effects. Unleashing the retail investors' potential is one of our keys to this movement. We have a technology. Martin, sorry to interrupt you, but your time is actually up. Okay, perfect. I'm ending. <laughs> sorry. Loretta, no please. Your question. Thank you very much. Um, how do you plan your entrance to Chile, considering um, how things are here in Chile that maybe we are not very used to this kind of, of, of I don't know how to call it, technology or system, or how do you yeah. plan it? Yeah, so we uh, go for a B2B to C uh, approach. So we are looking for partners in the energy as well as in the fintech and the banking domain. Because uh, what uh, is essential for market entry is the, um, to uh, come along with the financial regulator. We are operating uh, in the regulated financial space. So we, are need, we need on the one side projects, project owners yeah, um, interested in funding their projects, and at the same time, uh, financial licenses in order uh, to fit it in our platform. So we are looking for potential partners in Chile um, to establish a hub for South America. We're doing similar things in Asia with Singapore uh, and using one location as the first entry point into uh, um, the, the markets there. Thank you very much. Is there another question um, for Yoki? Uh, Andreas, please. Both Andreas. Uh, just one question uh, to the relationship between Yoki and um, what was the... Um, Steak sense. Spotify. Spotify. So what's the relation? So basically, um, Yuki, um, Spotify is a daughter company, um, um, which is also the name of a product. And in this daughter company, we took a joint venture partner inside um, to uh, back us with a, a project pipeline. Because without the first initial projects, it's difficult uh, to start a platform. So we have a uh, one of the largest EPCs um, and they, they fill the pipeline at the beginning in the first year. And uh, in by middle of this year, we open for third party projects to be uh, onboarded on the platform, which can then be worldwide distributed uh, uh, and open for any investments. Great. Andreas, do you still have your question? Was um, very much connected to the previous one. If you can disclose more of your execution partner on the EPC side, how to actually build uh, then the uh, installed megawatt. So, um, so we have a, a partner, Sense Steak. Um, we have a project pipeline of uh, four gigawatt. Um, we are bringing out now the first 300 million euros uh, in investments uh, on the platform in countries all spread all over Europe. Um, and then extending in other countries. Um, our differentiator is we are connecting the asset directly with the investor. So we are using smart meter gateways and smart meters to, to draw the information, the data, uh, which are then the baseline for return on investments for any investor. So we calculate the yield based on the performance of the asset. Um, and, and this allows us then uh, to distribute um, in 15 minutes uh, uh, steps um, um, the returns to investors. So this is where we, where we basically connect assets with investors. So uh, if, you, if, you, if the sun shines more, uh, basically you have uh, more return. So you're participating on the performance of the asset. So this is uh, 
uh, how we are connecting actually with investors. So in a, in a way, we are demo, democratizing, you know, access to these type of assets, which have been until now very much closed. Because uh, we think that um, everybody should not only prevent CO2, uh, but they should also benefit, you know, in the way how we are changing, you know, the, uh, the, the energy productions. Thank you very much, uh, Martin. Uh, thank you very much, dear jury. With uh, with this, we, um, we 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 close the speech session. We thank you very much. Uh, we, we would like to thank all startups uh, for your interest for um, participating in this initiative and for your pitch, of course. To the jury, you have now a few minutes um, to review your evaluation. And um, after the next presentation, after uh, Pamela's presentation, please go to the deliberation session uh, where Pamela is going to, to join you there. Yes, dear participants, um, the jury will leave us in a few minutes and for a few minutes to deliberate uh, which startup it's going to be, it's going to win today. But before that, and in the meantime, Dear audience, please stay with us. We are having now also one of our highlights today, which is the kickoff of the Energy Challenge Chile. Pamela Valdivia, the Executive Director of the State of Bavaria Office for South America, is telling us everything about it and how to apply. Pamela. Thank you very much, uh, Ursula. Thank you all for being here today. We have come to the important part or the second important part of our event, the kickoff of the Energy Challenge Chile. As you can see um, from all the great logos we are seeing here, we have very, very great partners that are backing us up today. And um, of course, they are supporting us organizing this program for Chile. So this program is, um, organized within the framework of the energy partnership between Chile and Germany. And although this is a, a high level intergovernmental dialogue on energy formed by the German Ministry of Econ Economic Affairs and Climate Action and the Chilean Ministry of Energy, in the view of the challenges that we have as a world, uh, that we have Chile and Germany and that we face to reach the targets in relation to the energy transition, um, it has become very clear to everybody that innovative technology-based entrepreneurship is essential and is, is an important element to create new technologies, to create new services, and to create new business models. So having said that, we are looking for startups. And what startups are we looking for? Well, Chilean startups that have a solution that contributes to the energy transition in the fields of energy power generation, electric and thermal, in the field of green hydrogen, startups that have a solution in the field of energy storage, in the field of infrastructure, like electricity grids, district heating and cooling, grid resilience, gas pipelines, etc. Startups that have a solution in the field of mobility or a solution in the field of digital transformation for the energy sector, energy efficiency, or sector coupling and much more. So it's a wide and open opportunity for all startups that contribute to the energy transition in Chile and could do it also in Germany. So what do we offer those startups? Well, we offer you to pitch in front of industry leaders, investors and founders, multipliers, representatives from research and development, representatives from academia, we offer you access to mentoring sessions and workshops. We offer you access to, con to a contact network to foster business opportunities and access to potential partners and clients. All that in order to get to know the German energy e ecosystem. What does the program cover? Well, the tickets from Chile to Germany, the accommodations, including lunch and dinner, and the ticket to an important founders festival that is bits and bretzels or a similar event in order to present you in front of all those important and potential partners. And of course, this will be complemented with a personalized agenda with potential partners and clients. Who can apply? This is very important. We are looking for startups that have developed an innovative solution or an innovative technology to reduce emissions related to energy or power generation. 
we are looking for startups that have a validated technology and validated business model, meaning they have a product on the market and actual sales. Startups that have received a private or public investment or ha have the necessary internationalization capacity. Startups that have the technical cap capabilities and the team to work with industry partners and startups that have the capacity to pitch and to communicate in English. What is the timeline of the Energy Challenge Chile? Well, today is the kickoff. The application deadline will be on April, April 24th. Um, the demo day for the finalists will be on June 23rd. And the trip to Germany will be at the end of September. The demo day itself, well, the goal of this demo day is to select the best startups with an innovative solution that contributes to the energy transition in Chile and could do it in Germany as well. The location will be probably online, but it will be confirmed afterwards. The date you already know, and the result of the demo day will award three, three, sorry, three startups will be awarded with a trip to and an agenda in Germany. What can you expect in Germany? Um, well, you will be participating in a very important startup event, which is called Bits and Bretzels. Uh, the location that we said, of course, is in Germany. And you will have, of course, a personalized agenda that we will program and uh, design together with the winners. How can you participate? Well, you have to apply. This is the, the platform for that, which was created by our, by our great partner, Expande of Fundación Chile. Uh, well, she will leave in the chat the link so you can find this application platform. And remember, you will have till April 24th to apply. So having said that, I hope to see you all in Germany representing the Chilean startup ecosystem. And if you are not a startup, please, let all your portfolio and partners and all the startups you know, let them know they can participate in this great event. And thanks again to all our great partners in Chile who are making this program possible. So having said that, I'm ready Ursula and I'm going to join the judges now in order to deliberate on the finalists of the demo day. So see you soon. Thank you very much, Pamela. Invitation is on the table. Chilean startup use this opportunity to explore the German market. And um, the jury is gone. We are saying here, we have a very interesting presentation uh, coming up. Um, we are going to know more about the German startup and innovation ecosystem in the energy sector in Germany. Let's start with uh, Kristin Eckert. She is Senior Program Manager at the German Entrepreneurship, who is presenting the Startup and Innovation Ecosystem in Germany. Christine, the stage is yours. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. It's a pleasure to be part of the event tonight. Yeah, my task <laughs> to present to you the overall Startup and Innovation Ecosystem in Germany, while Janela, my colleague, will do a deep dive into energy-specific topics. Why I was selected to do this, especially I'm part of German entrepreneurship, as Ursula mentioned, just a very, very brief introduction to who we are so that you know actually who is another organization maybe you can work towards um, when you're looking into the German market and why I'm introducing the German market to you. Uh, German entrepreneurship actually started 15 years ago in Munich, um, establishing a university incubation center at the Ludwig Maximilian University. From there, we scaled our offerings within Germany for early stage and scale up companies, um, also helping German startups to expand to the US and Asia on behalf of the German Federal Ministry of Economic Affairs. This program is called German Accelerator, very well known in the German market and by now, I guess, also in international ecosystems. Me personally, I've been working for quite a few years now with startups and SMEs from the US and now also from Singapore and South Korea on their expansion to Germany. So exploring the market, see how they can fit in there. What are the opportunities and how can we make the market entry actually happen? 
besides the startup work, we actually engage, and that's maybe also relevant for you, a lot of um, the big names, the corporates in Germany, on their innovation processes, both an internal and external innovation. For example, we set up the Volkswagen Data Lab in Munich. Finally, also very relevant for you is um, we have a global network of investors. Uh, most importantly, in Germany and Europe, we host Cashwalk, which is a startup uh, investor networking, matchmaking event, however you want to call it, um, that might be relevant for you as well when you look into Germany now and hopefully have a successful market entry and then go into fundraising. <laughs> so with that, I stop it here about the company, but get into the actual topic. Um, what makes Germany actually attractive for you as a startup from Chile? Um, when you probably have your first look into Europe, why would you choose Germany? I mean, you chose that event, so good for that as well already, but um, we do a bit of a deep dive today. Um, obviously, Germany is one of the most um, innovative economies in the world. This can be measured, for example, within Europe that we're leading in patent registrations. You have the heavyweights like Siemens and Bosch. We have some representatives here today as well who are investing billions in innovation, both internal and external innovation. What's also relevant to notice is that Germany is a very scientific research focused country. So you also have representatives of Fraunhofer here today, which is Europe's largest association of applied research. And finally, all the excellent universities across the countries that actually have their own innovation and business creation centers to educate the tech talent and founders of tomorrow to actually contribute to our thriving startup ecosystem that you're hopefully excited to look into. Sorry, I just skipped a slide. <laughs> Back to the global players. Of course, Germany is home to a lot of the heavyweights. Germany has a lot of startups that are offering solutions for them, but it's never enough. You have niche problems of corporate, so they're definitely looking for innovative solutions from around the world, which opens an opportunity for you also um, to work with them. But I don't want to focus too much on, on the big names, but actually rather another important group of companies that Germany is most known for, which are the hidden champions. So basically over 90% of companies in Germany, and that's very important to know, are medium-sized companies, SMEs. Um, so when you look into the market, do your competitive analysis, look into potential go-to-market partners or clients, this is definitely a group you should look into. And especially hidden champions, they are called like that because they're active in niche markets. They are oftentimes in that specific market of a global leader, but not known because they're active in such a niche market. And that's why you might have never heard of such a name as, as yeah, Miele or whatnot. Um, and, and these are companies that you should actually be aware of. That's why they're called hidden champions. They are often family owned. So their structure is very different from corporates. So different kind of interaction, maybe less advanced in startup company or startup Mittelstand collaboration, but definitely a partner you should look into to get exposure to the market, tap on their reputation and see if that's a potential client or go-to-market partner. Very important to know is also that SMEs, when we talk about that, even if the term SME says it's a small company, small companies in Germany are a lot larger than in other European markets. So that these are sizable businesses that you should look into um, when you consider Germany. So how do we connect in Germany actually all our actors in a specific industry? Um, when you look into corporates, the hidden champions, startups, research organizations, and so on, we have some initiatives, including from the Federal Ministry of Economic Affairs in Germany, that has brought together 12 digital hubs. So SpinLab, for example, one of the main event partners here is one of these 12 hubs um, to bring together the stakeholders of a specific industry, so corporates, investors, startups, and so on, um, to push for innovation and digitization in our core industry so that Germany, for example, we've been known for a long time in the manufacturing industry, but we have to push for industry 4.0 solutions to stay ahead of the innovation curve. So that's why we've established these hubs. And one other fact that I wanted to highlight here why I bring this up is Compared to other countries, let's say France, Germany, and within France, Paris is the main innovation hub. Within Germany, you see many different dots, and that's for a reason, because 
for different industries or different client groups, you have to look into different regions or cities. So please be aware <laughs> that there is not just Berlin as one of the startup epicenters in Germany, but actually different cities that are known for, for different industries and, and client groups that you might want to consider, whether it's B2B, B2C, or yeah, as I said, a specific industry. So take a deeper look <laughs> within the whole country. Then as a startup, of course, when you look into a new market, you're probably interested in the funding uh, scene of, of that country. So within Europe, actually, Germany plays a huge role. Almost a fifth of uh, the VC money spent within Europe uh, goes into Germany. You see, and that's also relevant for you, a huge push for um, investments in sustainability or sustainability related um, solutions or products and a lot more, um, yeah, 100 million rounds, mega rounds. What you also see here on the map again is that there is a local distribution. So there's again, not just one hub. There is one major hub <laughs> that you see here. Berlin is actually, or has been for many years, a major funding hub. So a lot of the funding rounds and, and startups actually happen in Berlin. You see number two actually, Bavaria <laughs> with capital city Munich attracts a lot of startup funding rounds and the number three North Rhine-Westphalia and Western Germany some of the cities in that state are for example Düsseldorf or Cologne which might ring a bell in the instead of the state's name is where a lot of funding rounds happen so there's also a local distribution where you see wherever you want to locate depending on your industry depending on where the investors are depending on where your clients are this is where you should go to <laughs> with me and then within the VC scene actually corporate VC plays a huge role in Germany we have a competitive um, role I would say within Europe and even worldwide um, in terms of co CVC co-investing you see some of the names here Bosch is actually one of the largest CVC in Germany future energy ventures for example is the energy sorry the innovation arm of E.ON one of the major energy companies so there's definitely a lot to explore for you. Finally, I want to, to round this up um, on, on the overview part, I would say, I've been working with a lot of startups looking into the German market and how do you get started? So of course you start with validating, do you have a fit in the market? Um, how can you get started? You might run into issues, that's for sure in Germany, it's not always easy. It's a highly regulated market, but as the nice saying is, once you make it there, you can make it anywhere. I would say Germany is your market, your stamp of approval for Europe. So regulators in other countries look up to German regulators. So you might have some hurdles to, to face in the beginning, but definitely once you have that stamp of approval, it will be much easier in other markets. And you can put that on your flag that you actually made it there. Second, and you're already part of this event with major organizations in both Chile and Germany, very important, I think, as always, and that's for any market, you should partner with in-market experts, be it regulatory shortcuts, be it um, warm introductions to the ecosystem, and I think you're really in the right place here. And with that, I want to round it up. Please reach out to me anytime if you're looking further into the German market, need introductions, need any advice, I'm always Happy to help. And with that, I would hand over. I'm not sure if I'm handing over directly to Janela, <laughs> but you can, okay, to do you backwards a lot. And then you will hear later a bit more about energy, energy specific um, areas in, in the German startup ecosystem. Thanks so much for having me and very happy to answer any questions now or later. And great. Fun. Thank you. Now, thank you, thank you, um, Christine, for your presentation. Um, now it's actually the time uh, for uh, our next presentation, and I gladly present you now Janela Villanueva uh, from Ivenetsky in BH for some key industry trends in the German energy sector. Please, Janela. Thank you very much, Ursula. I am going to share my screen. My screen. Oh. So Perfect. it should be already in presentation mode. Exactly. Thank you. Good. So hello, everybody. I am Janela Villanueva and working at EVE. Um, EVE, one of the top five energy companies in Germany and big here in the North region. 
Um, I am Peruvian, so I am quite excited to share with you some German insights and what I've uh, learned about the energy sector and having a different background. I think it's pretty, pretty interesting and amazing what is happening here. Um, Okay, so our first point of our agenda is to give you uh, the actual content context of Germany in regards to the energy transition. Afterwards, we will look at the key energy trends, technologies, and focuses, what is going on right now, and what does Germany needs to do or is doing in order to achieve their main climate goals. And finally, we will have an example of how energy suppliers, in this case, uh, EVA, are adjusting to the changes to the today's world, which uh, one of the key factors is definitely the digitalization of our business models. Um, so in this pipe chart, uh, I'm showing you the power mix distribution from last year in Germany in terawatt hours and percentage. And as the graphic show, it doesn't look that bad because we already uh, produce 40% of our energy production and it comes from renewables, mainly from wind and photovoltaic. However, um, by 2030, we need to increase this share we have to double this year to up to 30%. And one of the next challenge by 2045 is actually achieving the carbon free emission goal. Um, important to highlight here as well is that Germany plans to shut down the remaining nuclear plants by the end of this year. Uh, if I'm not wrong, I think there are just three or two plants remaining, nuclear plants. So it's clear that we are facing some challenges to target to a high share of renewables in our systems. Therefore, one of the things that we need to do is to shift our energy supply based on large, large power plants to a continuous balance between our fluctuating renewable energy generation that can be controlled and forecast and a consumption profile with a maximum of flexibility. So what does this mean? It means or it, it is all about that our system and all the players in it are capable to adapt and respond to the changes uh, in the power supply and demand in order to um, ensure the reliability of our grid operation and the security of the supply. So we can achieve this through battery storage system, hydrogen technologies, storage um, systems and in the integration of our power grid among others, obviously. Um, and that is what I want to show you and I, what I try to simplify this white topic in, in a diagram. So in this diagram, we can see overall some trend topics uh, which, in which, for example, some energy suppliers or new startups are placing their focus on. So let's start in the upper left corner with energy generation. Here, the main focus is on scaling up more decentralized energy systems for an increasing need in, in our renewables. The trends are for one of the trends is, for example, microgrids. Uh, yeah, the focus of the microgrids is that the consumers won't be a passive actor anymore, but an active agent able to make decisions of their own consumption and generation as we define it or we'll know, we'll know it better as prosumers. So these prosumers are going to be self-sufficient, independent. This means that they are having their own photovoltaic, their the solar panel on the roof together with a battery storage system, for example, to manage their own energy. Continuing to the right, we have uh, energy distribution manage and, and management, uh, where the focus here is on increasing our grid reliability and the integration of decentralized energy resources through smart grid management platforms, for example, the power plants, the virtual power plants. And the technologies used here in this area are, of course, the software technologies like big data, artificial intelligence, cloud services for an efficient capacity distribution within the players on, on the system. So a perfect example of these software applications are in the energy battery storage sector. And one of our many focuses here is that the utility scale battery systems help into the grid stability by using intelligent control 
acid control, we balance the peaks in consumption and surplus generation, also known as peak shaving. So this intelligent algorithm decides when the right time is to load or unload the battery. And the same principle is applied for industrial clients, where the system ensures that your storage is always charged at the exact, at the exact right time with exact right amount of energy um, in order to meet our, your needs, um, also considering weather, energy market data, as well as grid data. So at the end, these platforms work as an intelligent energy management system. So, and what do we get out of it? Quite simple is flexibility. In a way um, that the industry clients are also acting like providers in the energy system, because when the storage system is not working anymore for you, it can contribute to the transformation to a decentralized energy system. And thanks to a market access, you could earn money by trading your energy, for example. So this pool of different assets working together, and of course, counting in the wind parks, photovoltaics, and the different technologies, that is what we call the asset aggregation. And of course, they are not, only, they are not the only players in this role. A big, big topic for us right now is also the e-mobility infrastructure and load management, which is also what a battery system does, but for e-mobility, the big challenge is for the grid to provide enough power for all electric vehicles coming up. So one part of the solution is, for example, the combination of a of a photovoltaic, but uh, of a sorry, of a solar panel, um, a battery storage, or with a charging infrastructure. Because what we want at the end is to be as self-sufficient as possible. Um, in this sector, we are also developing platforms that can help in finding strategic locations uh, for new better for new charging stations, uh, for example, in a highway close to a restaurant or to a tank station. Buildings are on their transformation to be also smart and self-sufficient. And therefore you also need load management platforms for the different assets like the combo that I just mentioned a while ago. So what do we get out of this whole picture is that we are starting to develop tailor-made solutions for each segment specific requirements, such as platform for the energy community, energy trading, uh, for smart buildings, managing platforms or digital grids, among others. So one example that I wanted to bring you today is uh, from the EVE and how energy operators are and suppliers are evolutionating their business models together with new corporations and taking diverse approaches. And in the EVA group, we started by creating an, an innovation hub with a focus on future and digital solutions that help us accelerate our energy transition. And together with groups of data, data scientists, business development, venture capital, we are constantly analyzing our market. Um, one of the outcomes from this innovation hub was our startup uh, or is our startup B storage focusing on the battery storage system. Um, on the other side, we have in electromobility EVA Go looking out for the charging infrastructure and the load management in our grid. EVA sales is offering to prosumers all the services to get to their houses self-sufficient. And last but not least, AVA needs uh, as energy and gas grid pro, uh, operator. Um, we have a big project called Redispatch, which is mainly which is mainly the replanning of the use of our power plants in the event of power grid fluctuations to avoid grid bottlenecks and keep the power grid of on the German market stable. So um, of course, this is a big big topic, and I haven't covered. Uh, anything and um, um, haven't covered all topics, important topics like uh, green hydrogen, um, for example, um, and other investments that are making here in Germany. But I am happy to, if you want to reach out to me, if you have um, some specific field that you would like to have more discussions, and I'm happy to also connect you to the specialists uh, in, in those fields. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Janela, and actually both of you, also to Christine for um, your perspective and sharing um, your experience with us today. Dear startups, 
uh, dear audience, I'm seeing that we uh, have that the jury is actually back, which is actually very good because it means that we have the winners of the Energy Challenge Germany. Before I mention them, I would like to thank all members of the jury uh, for your work, for your engagement. Thank you very much. We really appreciate it. And now, for sure, a moment much awaited, the winner's announcement. And the winners are Breeze, Ari Motors, and Ecoligo. Congratulations. Thank and thank you very much uh, for all of you. Uh, it was difficult for us uh, to, to finally decide the winners because we really believe that all your projects are in, in the path of contribution to the energy transition and the challenges we have here in Chile. So thank you very much. Thank you, Loreto. Congratulations you. Uh, to the winners. Yes, sorry, someone? No. Uh, congratulations uh, to the winners. We will contact you after the session to let you more uh, about the next steps. To the rest of you, to the rest of the startups, it was a pleasure to um, have you here. Thank you again for your participation, for your interest. And of course, you can always contact us to assist uh, you in the, in the future. This way we are reaching the, uh, the end of our event. So I call up on this virtual stage, uh, Ricardo Morgado, his strategy and development director at Expande, Fundación Chile for some closing remarks. Ricardo. Are you there, Ricardo? Estás ahí, Ricardo? Ricardo? Gracias, Ursula. I'm Ricardo Morgado of Expande, Director of Strategy Development at Expande. As at Expande, we're very happy to participate and uh, as an active partner together with uh, the the AH, AH Chile and the state of Bayern and GIZ Chile to collaborate in this challenging open and competitive process of open innovation for the energy transition and climate change for Germany. We have seen the, the capabilities in Germany and during this uh, transition, but this is now the time to um, to, to talk uh, to you about the capabilities in Chile to, to offer your solutions to, to have an impact on, on, on the industry. My main motivation here is to invite our ent entire national ecosystem to get informed and apply for the challenge through through the website uh, uh, three times w energy partnership cl newsroom energy challenge chile as pamela said on her presentation the uh, the te technology based startups with their innovative solutions services and business models they are the basis to for achieving the the objectives of the energy transition and will impact industries and also the uh, the ecosystem and the scope of this challenge that will be done in chile has a has a, on the energy field uh, uh, energy storage mobility infrastructure and and putting together different sectors which are very wide for the uh, for the solutions being implemented as partners we want to promote the participation of Chilean companies so that they can get informed, which is very important because the challenge has some conditions. It is important that, that this is very fluid in terms of communication amongst the participants. And we will be playing a role as a platform to be able to respond in time and if, uh, so the, the, the spirit at, at uh, Expandis team is not to exclude anybody. Today, we start with the application process 
uh, on April 24th, as we said before. And you can check this out on the internet website. And, and I thank everybody, all the partners participating in this event, especially uh, partners in Chile and Germany for their solutions. And also all the expert teams that participated with their overview about the global situation, and especially Andreas that joined us with this uh, uh, session. And uh, so I say goodbye and thank you very much. That was actually all from our side. Big thank you again. Have a nice day. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Have a nice day. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.